Hi everyone, here is the situation. We have different Excel files in a folder. We are using Power Query to consolidate all the data that we want. So here is the result. I have the data from 1st of Jan to 21st. When I have new data file come into the same folder, you know what? When I right click and refresh the table, I will get the new data into the same table easily. So now we see the data from 22nd to 28th. This is what Power Query expect to do, and it is doing a great job. But in order to do that, there is one important requirement is the data should follow consistent pattern or consistent data structure. What I mean is, in our example, we have a common headers. This is a very simple data. We have only four columns, and in each data file, we will see that they have the same number of columns and exactly the same headers. So when I have another new file next week, coming into the data file, and I am expecting Power Query to get the data for me. So I'm going to refresh it again. However, this time I've got one error. Okay, and let me check on the data. I don't see any new data, but I see brands. When I scroll down to see the details, there is nothing, only blank, blank, blank. So what happened in the new data file? Let me have a look. Oh, somehow the headers got changed. Instead of having the sales amount as the headers, now the sales amount become a currency. And we have two rows of headers, which is totally different from the previous data file. That's why our power query failed. And the good thing is, the changes is not so bad, and I've confirmed that in all the coming new files, we will have the data of this structure, meaning in all the new data files, there will be only four columns but with two rows of headers. So we need to modify our power query to fit two slightly different data structures. This is what today's video is about. Let's start from a blank book and start from the very beginning. We go to the data tab, get data from file and from folder. We can browse for the folder or we can paste the folder path. Open. Then we will see the period of what is available in the uh, folder. There are three data files currently being put. I click on the combined and transform data. Then Power Query will look into the first file, first file as the sample file. We may choose a different or a particular file, but normally it will take the first file as the sample file. And then it tells us what is available in the sample file. There is only one red sheet called sheet number one in our sample file. This is only for simplicity. There are only one red sheet in all our sample data files. In real case, you may have more than one worksheet. You may also have tables. You may also have defined named or even print areas. So you have to instruct Power Query which table or which data sheet you want to look into. So now I select sheet one. I've got a preview of my data looking good. Okay. In just a few seconds, Power Query Editor opens, and we have the combined table already. 
this is our result, our result called data files. We can rename it to something else. Let's rename it to combined table or whatever that is meaningful to you. We can see that we have actually three data files in the table. And the data start from 1st of Jan to 21st of Jan. These are all the steps automatically created by Power Query. Let's go through them one by one. The first one is to get in the data. This is our source of data, which is the data found in the folder we tell Power Query to look into. And then if we move some hidden files, it invoke the custom functions that I will talk about later. What is the custom function? After the info custom function, I will, let me show you all the way at the end of the table. In the previous steps, we don't have it. The last column is the folder path. After the step, after the custom function is being provoked, we have the column called transform file, which is basically a table, the table in each data file. The next step is it renamed the column named to source named. Then if we move all other columns, normally I will also remove the source dot named. I don't want this column because I don't care about the name of the data file. But now I will just keep it as it is. The next step is to expand the table column. Basically, it's the action of clicking this icon. Expand the table columns means to consolidate, to append all the data, all the ta uh, tables. <coughs> the final step is the change type. Now we can click the close and load to load this outcome into our spreadsheet. Wow, in just a second, we have the combined table being loaded in our worksheet. Now let's do some testing. Let me check the new data file of week number four into the folder. What I'm going to do is refresh. We will see that we have the new data already. We have the data from week four. We have the data starting from 22nd to 28. Cool. Next one, I will drag week five data file into the folder. And I will do the refresh again. Right click the table, refresh. Now we pull the data file week 5. However, there is no data being append. And we've got one error. So what happened? As mentioned before, because we got a new data structure starting from the data file on week 5. We have two different we have two rows of headers. And this is the different and this causes the problem. So what we are going to do is go back to the Power Query and see what happened. Double click on the Power Query combined tables. We are going back to the Power Query editor. So make sure you go to this combined table. What I'm going to show you is, to, is the step-by-step -step approach to examine where the problem is. <coughs> First one, no problem. Second steps, we don't see any error. We go to the third steps. This is the info custom function. Still no problem. Wait. We are supposed to have five data files in the folder. But in our Power Query editor, there is on, there are only three data files. So remember, we have to refresh the preview. Now we have five data files, okay? Let me extend after the info custom function, 
the first table is doing good. We have the headers, we have the data. The second, the third, the fourth, no problem. The problem is sitting on the fifth tables. Why we are having a problem here? Because we have a different structure here. The headers becomes column 1, column 2, column 3, and sales amount. And this world of data becomes part of the data. They are no longer the headers. So the next step here we have is to rename the columns. The next step, remove other columns. So we have the five table here. This is the problem table coming from the new data file with two rows of headers. When we expand the table, okay, when we expand the table here, we don't see any error. Yeah, the error of each column is 0%. We don't see any error yet. Not until the final step change types. The final step change types, we change the column sales amount. We change the data type from test uh, from any to numbers. However, there is one data point coming from the fifth data file is HKD, which is not a number. So there is no way we can convert it to number. And this is exactly why we have the error as a result. And also we have all the node value here. Why we have all the node value here? Because in this data file with number five, we cannot find the site ID, the date, the serial quantity. We do not find this columns into our data file. That's why when we append the data file together, nothing is append. That's why we've got node here. So if we go back the step here, we will see this. Because we do not have site ID, date, sales quantity as the column named. That's why the append failed. Nothing is being append in the final result. So how to fix it? We need to go back to this sample file to fix it. When we go to the sample file here, the first step is the source. The source, we can see that it is coming from parameter number one. So we also see parameter number one here. Let's click on it and see what is inside. Our, what is it? Sample file. Okay, the parameter is sample file. And this is exactly the sample file here. This is where we can instruct Power Query which file to be the sample files. There are only two steps here. The first step is looking into the folder. The second step is the navigation. So which is basically the zero is the first file. If we want to specific uh, sample file, in our case, we want to use the final file, the final data file, which is sales week number five as the sample data. We can actually select that. But before that, again, we do not see it in the preview. We have to refresh the preview to get the latest. All the data file is here. So how can we insert Power Query to select this as the sample file? Easy. We can simply filter it. Select week number five here. So the next step, navigation, there is only one choice, which is week number five. This is our sample file. Okay, now we can go back to the transform sample files queries. If we go back to the first steps here, we can see that, okay, it is getting the Excel workbook from our parameter 1. The parameter 1 is actually pointing to sample file, which we just make a, a, a revision. We want sales week number 5 as the sample file. That's why 
we have this as the sample data in the sample file query. We see it, okay, which is quite different from the original uh, sample data file. In the original sample data file, we have only one headers. Let me show you here. Like this. This is our previous data file. We have all the headers on row number one. However, in the fifth data file, we have two headers, which is no good, and it caused the errors. This is exactly what we need to handle in this sample query. We need to think about a transformation step that will fit both structures and automatically generate the step is promoter headers. When it is promoted, we've got column one, column two, column three, and sales amount. So this is the inconsistent column headers and make the appending fail. So I'm going to remove it. Because I know that in our example, all the columns come in exactly the same orders, meaning the first column is always site ID. The second column is always date. The third column is always sales quantity. And the fourth column is always sales amount. We have to make sure it happened all the times in order to do what I'm going to do here. Otherwise, we have to think about other approach in this. But for simplicity, let's assume this is always the case. What I'm going to do is I can rename all the columns by myself. Column 1 is always site ID. Column 2 is always date. Column three is always sales quantity. And the final column is always sales amount. The next step is I need to get rid of the node value here. And also I need to get rid of the title here. You may be tempted to use remove rows, remove top rows, because we can actually remove the top two rows here, but do not do so. Because this is a sampled query that will be applied to every single data file in the folder. If we are going to remove the top two rows, it means we will also remove the first, the top two rows in all data files for week one to week four. If we are going to remove all the top two rows in the previous files, that means we will remove all the valid data on the first row in the previous data files. This is extremely dangerous, and we do not want to do that. So how can we get rid of the first two rows that we don't want, and we can apply the same transformation steps to all the data files in our example? Actually, we can do it by filtering. What we want is to get rid of all the node and the site ID. Done. Now we are done. All the sample files, all the queries we did in this sample file will be transformed or converted into a function as the transform file. Actually, this function We've seen it before. If we go back to the combined data, still remember the third step here is info custom function. Basically, it is doing whatever we did in this query, transform sample file. All the transformation steps we did here will be invoked here. So we can see that for each Excel file, and uh, let me go to these steps to have a condensed look. So in this data file, we will put the data here. In this data file, we will have the same consistent table. 
being transformed. Now, if we go back, we see that no more errors. And if we scroll down to week 5, we see all the data being appended correctly. Now we can close and note. Let's right click on the table, refresh it again to make sure all the data is being updated. Checking on the data, we see that all five data files are included in our result. Looking at the date, we have the data starting from 1st of Jan to 4th of February. It is working good because we have modified our sample query to fit both scenarios. In your situation, you may face in a different scenarios that may require a different transformation steps. But the point is, we can do it with Power Query, and that is the beauty of the Power Query. I hope you like this video. If you want to download the sample files to follow along, you may get the sample files from my blog post. You can see the link below. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.